All right, now that we're shifted, I think I can go ahead and um, introduce uh, Martin Gudgeon. You can go by Goj. I do. I like it. And we're going to look at PlayFab, Azure Functions, and Visual Studio Code. That's right. Oh, that sounds really exciting. OK, so um, why don't you introduce yourself first and talk like directly into this mic thing in the jig? All right. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Martin Gudgeon. I work on the PlayFab team, uh, which is part of the gaming organization uh, here at Microsoft. Uh, building backend services for game developers. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be talking about uh, what PlayFab is, uh, how we've done some integration with Azure Functions, um, and we'll show off a cool Visual Studio Code extension as well uh, along the way. Cool. Um, is your... We're going to go ahead and plug in your computer. Getting that settled. Yes, there you go. Okay, and we'll go ahead and... Check your HDMI. Oh, yeah. All right. We're good to go. Excellent. All right. Let's dive straight in. Uh, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about what PlayFab is, um, and then also talk about something that we call CloudScript, then talk about how we've integrated with Azure Functions, um, and then most of the, the uh, talk will actually be a demo um, of all of this stuff kind of hanging together, uh, and as I said, using Visual Studio Code for some of it as well, uh, and we'll sh show a little game uh, written in Unity. Uh, so what is PlayFab? Well, PlayFab was a company uh, that Microsoft acquired uh, a little less than two years ago. Um, and uh, we build back-end services for games. Uh, so think matchmaking, leaderboards, uh, servers for multiplayer games, that kind of thing. Uh, it's platform agnostic and language agnostic. Um, we support you know, the standard platforms that you might expect from Microsoft, uh, Xbox and PC. Uh, but we also have games running on uh, PlayStation, uh, Switch, uh, Android, iOS, you know, other mobile platforms, that kind of thing. Uh, also, language agnostic. Um, we have SDKs for all sorts of languages, uh, and we even accept pull requests for uh, new SDKs and additional languages from the community. Uh, customers, uh, they range from uh, small, you know, single developers writing a game, perhaps in their spare time, uh, all the way up to big AAA studios uh, running, you know, big multiplayer games uh, on our platform. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from uh, uh, the pre-acquisition part of PlayFab um, was, uh, you make it fun, we'll make it run, uh, which is kind of our way of saying, you know, you're the game devs, you know how to make fun games, uh, do all that creative work. Uh, you don't want to have to deal with uh, setting up backend services and all that kind of thing. You know, let us take care of those kind of things so you can focus on uh, making the fun stuff in your game. So what is CloudScript? Well, PlayFab has a bunch of different services, as I mentioned, um, and you know we have a reasonably sized team building more and more of those services over time as, uh, as we get customer demand. Uh, but even with all those developers, um, we can't build everything that every game will ever need. Uh, and so one of the things that we've done uh, is we've provided this thing called CloudScript, which allows game developers to provide their own logic um, to integrate with um, existing PlayFab services or, in fact, other you know, external services uh, in such a way that they can then extend uh, the, our platform uh, to do other things that we actually don't uh, uh, have features for right now. Um, it works actually quite well. What tends to end up happening is a um, bunch of people build a thing. You know, We notice on the PlayFab side that a lot of people are having to build a particular thing in CloudScript, um, and then that gives us uh, information about what kind of features we should probably go and make first class uh, in PlayFab over time. Uh, it gives us uh, trusted data access. So because uh, PlayFab is actually invoking the scripts, uh, we can get at data for your game, for your players, and provide it to those scripts in a secure way. Uh, you know, you'll be happy to know that you know that the client can't get at that data and manipulate it in any way. Um, it's always secure. Uh, you can initiate those calls uh, from the game client. You can also do it from an intermediate server if you have one. Or you can actually hook it up to various bits of PlayFab infrastructure um, and have us call uh, your logic as various things happen in your game. Uh, and it really can be any game logic. You know, we don't really control in any way or put any restrictions on what you can or can't do in that game logic. We have some limits around how long that logic can take to run, um, but in terms of what it does, um, it's really up to you. So here's just a small diagram of the kind of things that we do with CloudScript. Um, so at the top, we have a, the different ways that CloudScript gets invoked. Uh, so directly from clients, directly from servers. Uh, you might notice that little uh, arrow going to the thing that says PlayStream event uh, up on the right. 
Um, so play stream events are things that we generate at various points as your game is running. So player logs in, play stream event. Uh, client loses focus, play stream event. Uh, player gains a level in your game, play stream event. And then you can hook up uh, scripts to those events uh, and have them run um, and apply filters to them and all that kind of thing. Uh, we also have the notion of scheduled tasks. So if you want to run some kind of cloud script um, over all of your player base once a day, perhaps, uh, to do some analysis, um, you can do that kind of thing. And we also have this notion of segmentation. Uh, so we can actually divide players into segments, um, such as you know players that have logged in every day for the last week, or players that haven't logged in for two weeks, or players that have reached level 50 in your game, or players that have visited half the areas in the map uh, of your game. So we can build these segments dynamically, and then we can run Cloud Script based on when players enter or leave uh, those segments. In terms of the kind of things that happen in Cloud Script, uh, we have a few examples down the bottom of this diagram. Um, so perhaps handling player login. Uh, perhaps you detect the first login of the day for a player, grant them some login bonus for logging in, that kind of thing. Uh, this second guy, he was a lapsed player. He hadn't logged in for a while. So when he came back, we gave him a hat. Um, tracking daily rewards, generating stats, all that kind of thing. Okay, that's enough about PlayFab. What are Azure Functions? Uh, so PlayFab built this thing called CloudScript um, back probably around the same time that the Microsoft folks were building um, Azure Functions. And Azure Functions is Microsoft's world-class uh, serverless compute platform. And what does that mean? Well, it means that you just write the code that you need and you deploy it and you don't have to worry about scaling up servers, making sure you have enough machines running, um, all that kind of thing. The Azure Functions runtime uh, will scale up um, the servers needed to run your code as your demand uh, gets larger, and then it'll scale it back down again uh, as the demand curve drops off um, as you just go through the, the kind of natural life cycle of your game during a day. Uh, you know, peaks in the evening when most people are off work and able to play games and then ramps down again uh, overnight. Um, you get a choice of language with Azure Functions. Um, I'll be doing the demos here uh, in C Sharp, but you can write in Java, JavaScript. Um, I think we have F Sharp and Python support as well. Um, in terms of deployment, um, I'll be deploying from Visual Studio Code um, for these demos because it's uh, fairly uh, quick and easy to get going. But you can also hook it up to all sorts of source code repositories. Um, so in terms of what we do at, at uh, inside PlayFab, we actually deploy a lot of our stuff directly from GitHub. Um, so we hook up uh, Azure Functions to a particular branch. Uh, and whenever we push to that branch, uh, Azure Functions runs the deployment pipeline uh, and deploys our new code. And there's a bunch of free tools. Uh, we'll be showing some of them. Um, I'll be showing the extension for Visual Studio Code um, as part of this demo. Uh, but there are also uh, add-ons for Visual Studio as well to let you interact with Azure Functions. So we talked a little bit about CloudScript and a bit about Azure Functions. How do those two things relate to one another? Um, and what have we been doing uh, for the last uh, few months. Well, one of the main requests we got um, about CloudScript inside PlayFab from customers was, um, please let us write code in C Sharp, because um, we only had JavaScript support um, in the existing system. Um, and also, please give us um, a debugging story, uh, because debugging the kind of classic CloudScript inside PlayFab um, was basically a case of doing printf inside JavaScript, which was not very much fun for anybody. Um, and so we looked around and thought, well, we could try and build our own um, you know, hosting system for hosting C sharp code and maybe try and hook debuggers up to it. Or, um, you know, we could take advantage of all the stuff that the Azure Functions team has built um, and just use that. And they have a team that is dedicated to building uh, world class serverless compute, uh, whereas the PlayFab team, uh, you know, has a bunch of responsibilities related to games. And, you know, providing a serverless compute platform is kind of part of that, uh, but it's not really our core competency. Uh, and so we'd like to build on something built by people for whom it is their core competency. Um, so the way that this works um, is we've done some integration. We've added some APIs um, and some portal experiences to PlayFab um, that allow you to, uh, first of all, you publish your functions to Azure, um, just like you would any functions app. Um, and you register those functions with PlayFab. Uh, and currently, we have support for HTTP triggered functions. Um, I'm currently working on adding support for queued functions as well. Uh, and that'll roll out later in the year. Um, and you register those functions with PlayFab, you give them a name, you give us the URL, um, and then you add calls from your game client or from your game server if you have one, or you configure it to be run based on events. Um, and then when those things happen, uh, PlayFab calls your function, passing in a bunch of context 
um, about you know what player was actually uh, playing the game when the the call was made, um, that kind of thing, uh, so that you can then run whatever logic is uh, that you need to. All right, um, that's enough talking. Uh, let's switch to uh, uh, demo mode. I'm just going to move a few things out of the way here. And switch to uh, Unity. Uh, so we have a little Unity game here. And... Oh, it's lost the signal. Oh, no. Uh, unplug it and plug, plug it, it back, back in. in. All right. It's thinking, uh, there we go. Okay. So I have a little Unity game here. Uh, which we'll be we'll be uh, playing with. Um, apparently, in America, it's called tic tac toe. Um, in England, I know it is noughts and crosses. Um, and can I pet Steve here? Of Are course. You changing your resolution to nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Not at all. Uh, display settings. Yeah. And let me know in chat if this is only something that Kendra notices. Nineteen twenty <laughs> by ten eighty. Yeah. All right. All right, great. Thank there you. we go. No, no problem at all. All right. Um, so hopefully that's uh, that's a bit more visible for everybody. Uh, so we're going to play this little game called Tic Tac Toe. Um, the Unity part of this game is actually fairly minimal, and the logic is actually implemented um, in Azure Functions. Um, the Azure Functions are uh, deployed in Azure Functions app. We go to this, uh, this is Visual Studio Code, um, and here's uh, one of the uh, VS Code extensions. Um, this is an Azure Functions VS Code extension. Um, it gives me a list of the subscriptions that I have, and then a list of all my applications. Um, and here's the one that we're, we'll be using, uh, the tic-tac-toe.net uh, conference 2019 demo. And currently we have three functions um, set up uh, in Azure, make player move, reset game state, and win check. So let's go to uh, Unity. Uh, and just run the game. Uh, let me just bring up Edge before we do that. Uh, so this is the PlayFab portal, and this just has a bunch of stuff about the game, APIs that have been called, that kind of thing, logins, etc. And then we have this thing called PlayStream. And PlayStream is this stream of events uh, which will happen um, as I play the game. Uh, so this is empty right now, but as I start doing stuff in the game, uh, this will start filling in. And then towards the end of this demo, we'll try and hook up an Azure function to one of those events uh, and actually have it run. Okay, so back to Unity. I'm going to hit play here. And it's doing something. And oh, there we go. So it did log in. It's resetting the game state. So we store the game state server side so that the client can't mess with it. So we're just making that. And I got a 400 because I forgot to disable something. One second. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That is a mighty taskbar. Uh, it is a mighty taskbar. I didn't realize it was going to be quite so large. Uh, so let me just turn oh, that off. No, all good. Uh, so let me just stop that and restart. Login, resetting game state, and now it's waiting for the player move. Um, so again, if I flip back to Edge, we should see at least a login event has happened. Uh, so down here, player logged in, unknown city. Apparently this is a secret bunker. Nobody knows where it is. Um, and then player device info, so we got some information about the device. If I click this, we'll see information about the player. Um, so these events are just going to be generated as I play the game. Um, so, you know, if I win, there'll be an event saying I won. If, the, if I lose, there'll be an event saying I lose. So I'm going to click my player move, and it's going to request the I'm I move, and then I get an exception. Okay, and the reason for that is I haven't yet hooked up um, the Azure function for the actual uh, computer move. So I have the Azure function for, for recording where the player decided to place their token, uh, but not for the, uh, uh, the computer part. Um, so uh, let's go to... VS Code again, and let's go to Make AI Move, and I'm actually going to register a couple of functions here. Make Random AI Move. I wonder if you can guess what that does, and Make Minimax AI Move, uh, and we're actually going to deploy both of those functions um, just straight from here uh, to Azure. And so I can do that straight from VS Code. 
Uh, there's this little toolbar here in the Azure Functions extension, uh, and here's the deploy uh, option. So I hit deploy. I tell it where I want it to go. Oh, and I get the error, which means it lost the connection while I was asleep. One second. Let's bring this back. So if you do see the error when you're using the Azure Functions extension for VS Code, uh, it usually just means that you, you switch network or something um, while the extension was running uh, and it seems to get a little bit confused. So uh, back we go. Hit deploy. That's where I want it to go. It's going to say, are you sure that's what you want to do? I am absolutely sure. Uh, so that's going to run off uh, and deploy the game, uh, deploy the functions. Well, that's happening, because that's going to take a minute or two. Let's just go look at uh, some of the Unity code. Probably easier to actually look at it in uh, VS Code. Uh, so here's just another instance of VS Code. Um, and you know, here's, for example, uh, the thing that uh, resets the game state. So this is a handler. It sets up some um, some data structure. It basically says, hey, this is the player that I want to interact with. Uh, and then it calls a PlayFab API called execute function, uh, which is the thing that actually then uh, figures out which Azure function to actually call. Um, if everything succeeds, fine, we get an execution uh, completed. If not, then we uh, generate some message and display that uh, in the exception box. Um, we have a bunch of these handlers. Uh, for dealing with all of the different functions that the game is using. All right, let's see how that deployment is going. Uh, so it's finished. Um, so one of the cool things about VS Code uh, and the Azure Function Extension is I can stream the logs uh, for the Functions app directly into VS Code. So I'm going to choose Stream Logs. I'm just going to move that out of the way. It's connecting to the log stream. So now when I go back and play the game, we should actually be able to see uh, things happening uh, in that stream there. So let's uh, restart the game. Oh, one last thing. We need to register our function with PlayFab. Uh, you may remember from the uh, slides at the beginning. So let's go to the PlayFab Explorer, sign in. This is a little uh, kind of alpha extension that we've built. Um, just gives you a tree view of all of the game studios that you're part of and all the games that they have. Um, and I can get a list of functions um, that are currently registered. So I currently have three, make player move, reset game state, and win check. Uh, and I need to register my uh, AI move. And so the easy way to do that is I can go to the Azure function extension and you see these those new functions have now appeared. And I can grab the URL. So there's just a copy function URL menu option here. And then I can switch back to the PlayFab extension and then just say register, paste in the function URL, and then I get to give it a name. Now it'll try and infer a name from the URL. Um, and I actually want it to be called make AI move um, because that's the name that the Unity game knows it as. Uh, and you'll see why I'm actually making that change uh, in a moment. So I had a little pop up says registered function. Uh, so now they're registered. Uh, hopefully this time when I run the game, uh, the AI will actually be able to play uh, and will actually play a, a token somewhere on the board. So login, resetting game state, waiting for player move. I'm going to go for the middle. It's played a, played a token. Excellent. I'm going to go over here. Oh, it's not very bright. Okay, so I win. Marvelous. And so if we go and see over here, you see there were a bunch of events happening. Uh, again, we got login, and then my number of wins went from 15 to 16 because uh, I won the game. All right, so if I restart that game, let's see if it can be any cleverer the second time. Let's see. No, it's still not very bright. Uh, and the problem with this, this, with this uh, AI is it literally just picks a random square on the board to place its token, and it doesn't have any knowledge of how uh, the game works at all, uh, and so uh, it's not very clever. Uh, but one of the cool things about server-side logic uh, and the way that this is all hooked up through PlayFab is that I can actually go and register a different function under the same name. So I can go and take this Minimax AI move and I can grab the function URL for that. And even while the Unity game is still running, I can come back here 
and I can register a function and give it the same name, so make AI move rather than make minimax AI move. And now there's a different set of logic running in the cloud for this game. Uh, and this is just a simple example, um, but hopefully you can imagine the kind of things that you'd be able to do um, as a game developer. Um, so I'm going to restart this. Reset the game state, waiting for the player. I'm going to go in the middle. It's going to go there. I'm going to go here. Oh, okay. I'm going to go here. Okay, nobody's winning that one. Okay, so that one's a draw. Uh, let's... Oh, and it crashed. Um, so, uh, what we've done here, um, I actually played, we're on what's known as the free tier for, for PlayFab, so the uh, the API limits are relatively low, and I played the game a little bit faster than the API can handle um, due to the rate limiting. Um, and so, she failed. So let's restart and see if we can win the second time. Again, I'll play there, no, no. No. Nope. Okay, so this API you actually can't this this AI you actually can't beat. Um, you can draw and you can lose, um, but you can't actually win uh, against this AI. Um, and I like winning. So given I like winning, I can just switch it back to the other function. Just again, just go and copy the URL, re-register it. Give it the right name, and now we're back to having the easy to beat, you know, dumb um, computer player. And again, a restart. Okay, and now again, it's back to not, not being a smart AI. Okay, so I hope that that gives you some idea of the kind of things that you can do with CloudScript um, in terms of its dynamic nature. You, know, you can change the behavior of your game without having to change the client at all um, just by shipping a new function uh, up to Azure and then registering it with PlayFab. Um, so that's all well and good. Uh, let's flip to um, local debugging. Um, so one of the features that we got asked for was um, a good debugging story. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the name of this to make AI move because again that's the name that the Unity app knows it as, and then I'm going to put a breakpoint uh, on that function, uh, and then I'm going to hit F5 and let that run, and then again in our uh, VS Code extension here, uh, you may have noticed there was an enable local debugging option, uh, and if I click that. Uh, it basically enables a little shim inside our Unity SDK um, and says to it, hey, don't call the PlayFab server um, to execute through Azure. Call the local Azure Functions runtime that is running um, inside VS Code or Visual Studio. You could do it in Visual Studio as well um, instead. And so now if I go back uh, to Unity and we restart the game, I forgot to do one thing. Let me just go back here. Let's kill that. There's another function I just need to add. So we have this thing called execute function, uh, which is effectively a stand-in for the execute function API on the PlayFab server. Um, and so the Unity SDK knows to call this um, when it's in this local debugging mode. So let's run that. Hopefully it'll work this time. Resetting game state. Oh, well that makes me sad. Oh, I was too fast. I didn't wait enough time for the host to actually start up. Um, so it's currently coming up. Why does it think it only has one function? That doesn't sound good. Let's kill that second. That. Okay, building, running. 
finished building. Starting the function host. There it is. And then there we are. Okay, so we have all of our all of our functions are running. Excellent. So back to Unity. So restart this. Maybe the third time it really is the charm. So it's resetting the game state. It's waiting for the player move. Great. So reset game state worked. I'm now going to do the player move. It's requesting AI move, and that means it should have stopped in the debugger. And lo and behold, it has. And now we're just in a normal debugging environment. So I can use F10 to step through things. Um, I can look at local variables, all the things that you would normally expect uh, to be able to do in a debugger. Um, so that allows you to just debug um, your server-side logic effectively um, locally on your machine. OK, how are we doing for time, Kendra? Um, we're doing OK. We can switch over to questions. OK, more to show. I have one more thing to show if we have time. Do it quick. OK, I'll do it okay, quick. We got it. <laughs> so uh, back to the portal briefly. Um, and just show you this automation tab. And uh, here's a list of my functions. I just wanted to show you how you would hook this up. Uh, so here's a list of functions that are registered. You can register them here too, as well as through the VS Code extension. But we have this thing that says rules. And then I can set up a new rule. And then let's call it a login. And then I get to pick an event. Here's a whole ton of events that PlayFab generates. But there's a player logged in event. And I can then add an action to that. We have a bunch of standard actions that you can use, granting items, virtual currency, that kind of thing. And you can also execute an Azure function. So it then gives me a list of all the Azure functions it knows about. I can just pick one. So I would write some custom function to handle login, register it here. It would show up in the list, and then it would run whenever a player logged in. All right, quickly back to slides so that we can wrap up. And it's Shift F5, I think. Yes, excellent. So takeaways. Um, that was a quick uh, run through um, Azure Functions integration with PlayFab. Uh, we're using Azure Functions as our next generation cloud script. Uh, it's in private preview today. Um, you can sign up for PlayFab in general at playfab.com. Um, Azure Functions, you can find out about at that URL there. Um, the VS Code extension is at aka.ms slash PlayFab Explorer. And if you have any questions about any of the above, uh, send mail to me as gudge at microsoft.com. So cool. Okay, I'll just grab this mic over from you and act like a real interviewer. Okay, so we have some questions. First off, will this project be available at some point on GitHub? So um, parts of it will be. Um, some of it already is. So that execute function um, thing that we use for local debugging, that's actually already in a public GitHub repo um, under the PlayFab organization. Um, I also hope to um, open source the Visual Studio Code extension as well. Um, it's kind of almost ready to go. I just have a bunch of publishing stuff I need to figure out how to do uh, to get over that hump. Um, we actually do all our work in PlayFab in GitHub, um, but the server-side code is all, all in a private repo. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, we had a question earlier. Um, so it sounds like PlayFab is, has already glued different systems together, like messaging, queuing, event systems, et cetera. Can it be used for non-game applications? <laughs> or is it truly geared toward game? Uh, that is a great question. Um, so we are very much focused on games, and we are in the gaming org. Um, but we do get a lot of questions along that along those lines, uh, and we do actually have a couple of people in the team that are working with other industries um, to try and apply PlayFab to those uh, kind of places too, because it does actually apply to a whole bunch of places. Um, if you think about, if you don't think about players, but you know, think about the hotel industry and think about guests. Right, guests are kind of like players, um, and maybe you would want to be able to segment those guests according to certain rules and all that kind of thing. So yeah, PlayFab does have applications that um, in that those kind of areas, but we're mainly focused on the game side. Yeah, cool. We're excited about it. So yeah, the the examples they give in the chat were like chatbots or line of business mm -hmm. applications, keeping track of achievements, uh, such as like tickets closed or calls taken. Pretty cool. Okay, um, so I assume it would be. Oh, let's see. Oh, some other people are saying this would probably be a great learning platform, too. Um, and it might be an interesting option for people to start working on a project using PlayFab. Any uh -huh. educational aspirations? Um, so I, I personally used to be an educator um, before I joined Microsoft. I spent a lot of time flying around the world teaching various people how to do use various bits of technology. Um, and certainly, PlayFab does have um, a free tier 
Um, so you can actually play around with it and do stuff with it without it costing you any money. So it is good for learning uh, in that respect. Um, Microsoft has a whole bunch of um, assets uh, around the education space. Um, one of the ladies who used to be on our team actually um, was so passionate about um, education that she actually um, moved to work on the, the Minecraft team that works on education uh, assets. Uh, so that would be another thing to look at if you're interested in the educational aspects. Great. Okay, one more question. We are at 7.30, so I'm sure the next group will really want to come in here. Um, but uh, can I use this custom scripting with functions with some of their plan types that don't have cold starts, like the premium plan? Um, yeah, so cold start um, can be an issue. Um, you can absolutely use it with the premium plan. So you can deploy your function app into a premium uh, app service and have it always running. Um, we found, though, that um, once your game is running, there's enough functions traffic that it kind of never goes cold. Um, and you, know, that, you might want to think about that, too, because premium plan is limited in terms of how far it will scale. Um, whereas we've actually scaled the consumption um, app up to a three and a half thousand RPS uh, inside a single function app, uh, which is way larger than our biggest cloud script user today. All right, we have a bunch of other questions, but they can reach you maybe on Twitter at Gudge. Uh, Gudge, I'm Gudge pretty much everywhere except Reddit. Okay, cool, <laughs> <laughs> cool. So next up, we have Scott Hanselman who will be joining us. I'm sure we have more people tuning in for this. It's um, a .NET on a microcontroller exploring wilderness labs meadow. 